We can affirm that the Protestant religion is a personal religion. It is based on the fact that the Bible is the only source of faith and that everyone can interpret it personally. St. Peter was clear to say in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, that no prophecy of scripture is of personal interpretation. Despite the fact that the Word of God is alive and effective, Jesus Christ himself recognizes that there are some who do not understand it and tells them, you are wrong because you understand neither the scriptures nor the power of God. Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. St. Peter himself, speaking of the letters of St. Paul, tells us that in all his letters, there are of course some passages which are hard to understand. And these are the ones that uneducated and unbalanced people distort in the same way as they distort the rest of scripture to their own destruction. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. Jesus has to personally explain many things to the apostles. So can the Protestant doctrine of free examination be accepted? In other words, the free interpretation of sacred scripture? Under no circumstances. According to the Protestant doctrine, each one has the right to personally interpret the sacred scripture. Even in doubtful and difficult points, it is enough to only ask God for wisdom to understand. Now, there are 28,000 different Protestant churches which are founded on the Bible and affirm that the Bible says that the Word of God says this or that, and they believe themselves to be the authentic interpreters of the Holy Scripture. This brings us to the next question. What does the Bible really say? Is it a book of confusion on which everyone can rely to say different and even opposite things? If the doctrine of free examination is admitted, then each person individually is the highest authority in his church. There could be as many different churches as there are people, and they would all be good evangelists. It would be enough to be with a clear conscience of having asked God for wisdom to understand his word, and each one could be saved in his own way, according to his own criteria. If our separated brothers or the Protestants are consistent with this doctrine, they should demand the absolute suppression of every book that talks about the Bible, and the same for all talk or preaching about it, since in doing so, they are conditioning and imposing on others their own interpretation. And nobody has the right to do it, abusing the ignorance of others, since God can personally do it without the need for third parties. It is not surprising, according to these criteria of our separated brothers, that they criticize Catholics for having explanations of the Bible at the bottom of the page to better understand the sacred text. Why not criticize their Protestant books or their Protestant sermons? How to interpret the sacred scriptures or the Holy Bible? Only in a literal sense? Biblical scholars accept that in sacred scripture, there are different literary genres, historical, poetic, symbolic, apocalyptic, epistolary, figurative, non-figurative, and many more. The books of scripture have different characteristics according to different ages and according to the personality of the inspired author. Therefore, it is necessary to take into account the thought with which it was written, although sometimes God speaks in a figurative sense, which surpasses the knowledge of the inspired author. Jesus Christ himself speaks in a figurative sense. In John chapter 2, verse 19, he speaks of the temple as his own body. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 6 through 12, he speaks of the yeast of the Pharisees because of their doctrine. The same in parables. Some facts or people of the Old Testament have a non-figurative meaning because they foreshadow spiritual realities of the New Testament. Sarah and Hagar represent the two alliances, according to St. Paul, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 24. Adam is the figure of Jesus Christ, Romans chapter 5, verse 14. The bronze serpent is the figure of Jesus Christ on the cross, John chapter 3, verse 14. Jonah in the belly of the whale is a figure of Jesus Christ in the bosom of the earth for three days, Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. So everything has to be understood in a literal sense? Then when is it in a figurative or non-figurative sense? Let us also consider that today we do not have the original texts written by the inspired authors as they have disappeared. We only have copies or translations. How do we know then that the translation we have is faithful to the original word of God? Can any translation be accepted? Let's look at some examples. Martin Luther, who started and promoted the religious reform in Germany and whose teachings inspired the Protestant Reformation and the theological and cultural doctrine called Lutheranism. He translated the Bible into German, and Zwingli, after reviewing it, declared that it altered the Word of God. Johann Kavan prepared another translation, and after reviewing it, Johann Kavan realized he altered the order and added passages. 
Zwingli did his own translation, and the Lutherans criticized it as he criticized Martin Luther. Johannes Oikolampadius and the Basel doctors made a translation, and Theodore Beza declared that on many points, the translation was impious. So which translation is reliable and accurate? Can it be that we are never going to be sure if what we read is the word of God or a bad translation that alters it? It is common sense in any country that any code of laws requires a court to interpret them. The interpretation cannot be left to the discretion of each person. And is it too much to say that Jesus Christ left in the church an authority to authentically guarantee and interpret the sacred scriptures? An authority is needed in the church who authorizes a translation and legitimately interprets the word of God. As an official Latin translation, the church authorized the Vulgate translation of St. Jerome at the Council of Trent. Many other translations from modern languages are authorized by the bishops and have explanatory notes to better understand the sacred texts. The Pope, representative of Jesus Christ, is the last resource for the interpretation of sacred scriptures. On the other hand, the Catholic Church never prohibited the reading of the Bible in general and in absolute terms. It has always accepted it as the Word of God. What the Catholic Church prohibited were some wrong translations and in some countries. In Spain, in the Kingdom of Valencia, in 1233, James I, the Conqueror, prohibited having Bibles in the coarse language for having introduced Albigensian Bibles with distorted interpretations. The Council of Trent, in order to avoid the interpretations of the Reformed Protestants, ordered that only approved translations be used, and with explanatory notes. Therefore, only translations not approved by the Catholic Church were prohibited. Among the oldest and most complete codices that we have of the Bible is the Codex Vaticanus from the 4th century, preserved in the Vatican Museum, and the Codex Sinaiticus from the 4th century, and Codex Alexandrinus from the 5th century, both in the British Museum in London. Currently, there are about 6,000 copied codices from the 6th to 15th centuries, mostly done by Catholic monks. Among the most famous translations of the Bible are the Greek version of the LXX of the Old Testament, made between the years 3 to 2 before Christ, and the Latin Vulgate of St. Jerome or Jerome of Stryden. Before Luther published the German Bible in 1534, there were already more than 100 Catholic editions in modern languages, 14 in German, 20 in Italian, 10 in Dutch, 26 in French, and at least two in Spanish. The first Bible to be printed in the world was a Catholic edition. That is the Gutenberg Bible in 1466. Praised be Jesus Christ and blessed be the Virgin Mary, our mother. Amen.